Time for a new edition of Inside the Huddle right here on High School Cube News. Brian Shimino along with Mike Clark of the Sun-Times, Beth Long of Fox Sports, and Scout.com. If week one is any indication of what we're in for this season, we're going to have more ups and downs than Goliath up at Six Flags. A wild week one, first starting off off the field for the second year in a row. Lightning does indeed strike twice. Games postponed because of Mother Nature. Yeah, postponed, suspended. Um, you know, it's kind of tough for teams to get into a rhythm week one to begin with. And then all over the area, some games get pushed back till Saturday. Some of them wound up ending after 1130. So not a great start weather-wise for sure. Well, one game that did take place on Friday in a shocker in week one, number one Bolingbrook going down to Hinsdale Central. Matt Rafferty hasn't played quarterback for Hinsdale Central in two years and just knocks off number one. Guys, last week we touted Bolingbrook as maybe having one of the best defensives we've seen in recent years. Yeah, and I don't think we want to count out Bolingbrook just yet, but I mean, this kind of uh, is a great start for Hinsdale Central. First game under Dan Hartman, who uh, did a great job at Evergreen Park. As you mentioned, Rafferty was kind of the wild card coming into this one. Certainly, uh, it bodes well for the West Suburban Silver race because uh, it was a good weekend for the Silver teams and Hinsdale Central is going to be in the thick of that. When we were out there watching them practice last week for the MVP segment, which you guys will see this week, on Jacob and Julian Huff from Bolingbrook, a linebacker and a defensive back, is the fact that their coaches were saying, we don't really have any film on what Hinsdale Central is going to do. And after the game, a lot of the players were quoted as saying, we thought they were going to play cover three the whole time, ended up playing cover two a lot of it, confused the heck out of the defense and the offense. And that's exactly, I mean, I guess I would imagine to say it's a pretty big part in how they won. And a wild one on Friday night. Main South down 20 to Montini with six minutes left. They storm back right behind a punt block, returned for a touchdown with about 13 seconds left, and they shock Montini. Two really good teams. Uh, Montini's defense showed very well early. They picked off uh, Brian Collis, the Maine South quarterback, four times early. But, you know, it says a little bit about Maine South to be able to come back from that kind of deficit. You know, this kind of bodes well for them moving forward. Uh, they've got another big test this week at Wheaton Warrenville South. So then that'll give us an even better idea what Maine South said. And one final ranked team going down in week one, Wheaton Warrenville South losing to Glenbard West. Glenbard West came out very motivated. Last year they went into halftime up 11, lost the game. This year they went into halftime up 11 again and won the game. Um, you know, but Glenbard West is looking really solid this year, partly from the fact that they've got a passing game that's probably better than they've had in recent years, and they've still got the running game and the defense. So I know one of the players that uh, Beth has been kind of watching is Donovan Vaughn, their running back. He's a tall, lanky kid who everybody kind of thought was going to shine more at the defensive back position, but turns out you know, he can run the rock too. And he's a kid that he's so athletic and so versatile that all you have to do is watch him play. You can see him. He can play wide receiver. He can play running back. He can play DB, as we mentioned before. It's, he's a, a threat all over the field. I think we'll continue to see more and more about him. All right, let's look ahead to week two. Some really good matchups. And how about this one off the bat? Number two, Stevenson on the road to number three, Homewood Flossmore. It's going to be interesting to see with Stevenson's passing game with uh, Willie Bourbon, the quarterback, Cameron Green, the receiver, how HF's defense uh, handles that. And also to see on the other side of the ball uh, how Stevenson's defense handles HF's a little bit more varied offense. Uh, the Harley Hampton twins, the junior running backs, uh, are both a couple of uh, pretty good weapons there. So that is a, that's, it's clearly the game of the week and maybe the game of the season in the regular season. And now ranked number six, Maine South will go on the road to face now number 21 ranked Wheaton Warrenville South. You know, Maine South, again, kind of been uh, maybe a little bit overlooked the last few years, but uh, don't ever sleep on them. They've been a powerhouse, obviously, under David and Sarah, and before that under Phil Hopkins. Uh, you know, it looks like, you know, I really saw a lot out of them to come back from that deficit against Montini last week. Wheaton South um, has a really dynamic quarterback this year named Josh Pruder, similar in style to last year's quarterback, Ryan Graham, kind of a scrambler, able to keep plays alive. Uh, one of the things that uh, Coach Ron Muhich uh, talked about after the game, though, is that they want to get their running game going a little bit better than it was. They were a little bit more one-dimensional than he wanted them to be against uh, Glenbard West, so it'll be interesting to see how Wheaton South bounces back. And finally, a couple of local teams will be welcoming their friends from Southern Illinois. First off, Montini hosting East St. Louis, and then Loyola will be hosting Edwardsville. Yeah, I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, we don't get a chance to see the, the good downstate teams up here very often, so this is going to be a very interesting uh, opportunity to see uh, two very talented teams. Edwardsville uh, made the 7A semis last year, lost to Mount Carmel. Um, and have some prospects I know that Beth has told us about, um, you know, Loyola 
didn't get tested again in week one against uh, Marquette University High from uh, Milwaukee. So that'll be a good test for Loyola, presumably. Um, East St. Louis uh, has a great running back, Natrice Strong, and a few other prospects as well. They've done this a few times. They played at Glenbard West a few years ago in the playoffs, you know. And it's always uh, interesting to see East St. Louis because, you know, the, in terms of talent, there are very few programs that year in and year out have that kind of talent. East St. Louis actually has the, the top rated prospect in the state of Illinois for Scout.com. Terry Beckner Jr., he's a DN. And flipping the tables to Edwardsville, also they have a very young defensive end to watch, A.J. Epineza, who's probably going to be the top prospect in maybe the whole entire Midwest when he comes through as a senior in the class of 2017. Absolutely, if you're going to go watch any, either of those games, it's a fantastic time to see some really top prospects who will play a pretty high level of college football. So a lot of big games in week two and a lot of shakeups in the rankings. Check them out right here on High School Cube News. That'll do it for this edition of Inside the Huddle. For Mike Clark and Beth Long, I'm Brian Shimino, and we'll see you next week.